Hey, what is up guys? Kobe Harris here from Team No Leak, and today I'm going to be bringing you another deck profile on Blacephalon GX. This is a deck that's seen a lot of success since its release in Lost Thunder. Not a deck I've entirely been a big fan of as it doesn't really give you a lot of room to play with your skill, but it's still a deck that has seen a ton of success, most recently taking down the Madison Regionals, and this is actually just going to be Ian Robb's first place list. So I'm sure you've seen it before. Uh, we'll get into it though. We are playing four Blacephalon GX. It is our main attacker. Every attack on this card is pretty good, from Bursting Burn to Mind Blown to Burst GX. You'll you'll get use out of just about all of them through the stretch of a tournament. Then we are going to be seeing a three-three Poiple Noggin Natal line. Noggin Natal is key, of course, to be getting our energies into play in the early game and just throughout the game, making sure we can constantly get off those big mind blown attacks. Then we have the one ditto prism star to help us get into not only our noggin natals but also our alolan muck line which is kind of going to be our defense against jirachi based decks so another strong addition to this deck that we saw zach lesage uh come up with before collinsville regionals to let loose of course very strong uh you see all the top eight decks from madison are playing at least one or two copies of judge or marshadow with the eighth place zorark list actually playing three copies of judge so the shuffle draw four effect is really strong in this meta right now we see four copies of B-String. That's going to be key, of course, on those B-String turns to get a ton of energies onto our board. Not solely reliant on that anymore, as we do have a new addition of Welder to help us accelerate our fire energies early on in the game. We have an energy switch, of course, to kind of combat stall at times, as well as being able to get off mind-blown turns out of nowhere. Three treasures, four ultra balls, strong ball card count. I would like a fourth treasure, but, you know, sometimes you got to make adaptations. Heat Factory to help us draw through our fire energies, Lysander Labs to shut off things such as Choice Bands, Escape Boards, Wishful Batons, and other cards. Ultra Space, of course, to help us search out our Naginatals as well as our Blacephalons. And then a pretty simple draw supporter line with 4 Cynthia, 4 Lily, 2 Welder, as well as 3 Guzma here, 15 Fire Energy, and a Beast Energy. So pretty simple list, pretty simple deck. We'll just go ahead and run some quick games with it, see if we can have success with Blacephalon GX. It's uh, The main draw to this deck right now is definitely going to be its positive Reshizard matchup. You know, that's kind of how it came out of nowhere, beating a ton of Reshizards to make it to the finals, and eventually beating one in the finals to take the championship. So if you run into quite a bit of Reshizard at a cup or a regional, you could have a ton of success with the deck. Call Tails, and we will get to go first. That's going to be pretty good for us. Let us get our Naginatals out pretty early. Not a terrible hand here. We got a couple fire energy to discard, so that's going to be pretty good for us. See what my opponent is playing. It was a fairy type deck, so not really too sure what to expect here. Also saw a water type in there, I believe, so definitely interesting. Looks like it could be a Gardevoir deck. Definitely playing the Alolan Ninetales card, but pretty strong hand overall starting off here we do get the lily which is going to help us keep the cynthia in our hand for later turns looks like we prize two poiple that's going to be pretty huge i'm actually just going to go ahead and grab the ditto so since we can search that poiple out a lot more easily than this ditto here go ahead and lily for six Not too bad. We'll go ahead and get rid of another fire energy. I like to get a good number of those in our discard pile pretty early. That way we can streamline them with the Naga Natals. And I think I'm comfortable attaching the beast energy and just passing. See what our opponent's going to be playing here. I expect it to be a Guard of War GX deck, but with a low than nine tails, you can pretty much pair it with whatever you would like. So definitely going to be interesting. See a Pokemon communication. Looks like they're having a pretty tough time deciding how they want to play out this hand. It's going to be a Blastoise deck. Okay. I assume it is going to be playing the Blastoise GX, which shouldn't be too much of a problem for us. It is going to hit us for weakness, but we might just be able to keep the prize trade enough in our favor to win this game. I 
I'd like to get a mind blown attack off here. That way we can use our burst GX to kind of even up the prizes and actually just have to take two knockouts on some GX Pokemon. Then benching this Lele is going to help us out quite a bit. Those Blastoise GX are pretty big Pokemon and will require a ton of energies to discard to knock one out. So looks like they're just going to get a Lily for three off here. Lily for four, they do get the attachment on the Lele, so a little bit better than a Lily for three for sure, but doesn't appear immediately like they drew into any Squirtles, so definitely going to try to hit a Let Loose here off of our Cynthia so that we can disrupt this beacon. Let's see what they grab. I assume just two Squirtles here. Squirtle and an Articuno, of course. So, the Articuno is going to be pretty annoying for us. We do get the Naginatal off the top deck. That's going to be pretty good for us. And just go ahead and Cynthia. They have a huge hand, so definitely want to draw into this Let Loose Mars Shadow here. Can't seem to do it, but that should be okay. I'm going to go ahead and charge up. I will just go ahead and mind blown to start this price trade off pretty early. Get the marsh out of there. About a turn too late for us, but it can be very useful for us disrupting the rare candy plays next turn. So definitely going to be using that for sure. See an attachment. Definitely not going to see any sort of an attack coming off this turn. I don't believe... Well, they could play an Aqua Patch and then some sort of switching card too. But they don't even have any water in the discard pile at the moment. So, definitely not going to be seeing an attack come off this turn. And with the beacon, this Let Loose is going to hurt them quite a bit. See what they intend to grab. I'm sure a Blastoise or two. A War Turtle and a Blastoise GX. Ultra Space is going to be really good for us here. Let's get another Naginatal into play. Go ahead and attach a Fire Energy there. And I think I'd rather just bank off hitting a Draw Supporter off the Let Loose than trying to play the Lily for two. Seems a little bit more worth it to me. Not a whole lot, but we have Energies and we have B-Strings, so we are not going to be out of this one anytime soon. The Let Loose could definitely hurt them as well as they are playing a bit of a clunkier deck. Let's go ahead and Mind Blown. We will be seeing an attack coming off this turn, so if my opponent is playing something such as a Choice Band, that could be pretty disruptive for us. The Heat Factory is going to be pretty huge. see a choice ban so not too sure why they elected not to just go in with the Articuno that would have taken the knockout for them powerful squall if they do take the knockout we will definitely have an answer to this Blastoise here it's just after that whether we're going to be able to trade favorably enough to actually pull through this game. And just to concede, I'm sure they didn't get as many energies as they would need on the Powerful Squall to actually attack, so we will take that one against a Water deck. Go ahead and run another one. One of the big advantages Blacephalon GX has is it's such a fast deck after your, one of your Pokemon gets knocked out with the B-Strings. It's either going to lose fast or it's going to win fast, so you don't even have to worry about ties primarily. And can kind of just play your game at your pace. Even if you do get into a sudden death situation, Blacephalon GX is one of the best cards in the game for that as it does have that burst GX attack. Starting Let Loose is definitely not what we want to see here, but we can maybe pull out of it. We have a pretty decent hand afterwards, so 
I'd like to draw fire energy to discard with this Ultra Ball, but other than that, this hand is looking decent. Looks like we're probably playing against Lost March. Alolan Muck actually hurts this deck quite a bit. It's a little bit risky getting rid of these Cynthia's, but I really just want to get a big Lily off here to get a good strong opening start. Go ahead and get our first Blacephalon down. This actually might have been a misplay in hindsight. I might just want to go in with my Naginatals as the main attackers. But I'm sure the Blacephalon will prove to be pretty useful at some point in this game. Go ahead and attach one there and just pass. Haven't really seen Lost March around quite a bit, so we're not really getting the most meta decks here today, but definitely going to show the strength of Blacephalon GX anyways. It's kind of a simple deck. It does whatever it does against just about every matchup. You know, the only real difference there is whether you need to go heavy with Naginatal as an attacker or if Blacephalon GX is going to be your best attacker. See the Trumbeak, that'll remove our possibility of top deck Guzma. Looks like we are going to be committed to using the Cynthia next turn unless we draw into a ball card to maybe use a let loose. But even at that point, I think I'd rather just keep getting set up with my Poiples on the bench. See a let loose. And just to concede, looks like they didn't draw into anything, which is surprising because they had a pretty decent setup with three Hoppips on the board. So not quite sure what happened there. See if we can get a bit more of a competitive game in this time for you. See, it's going to be a grass type deck. That bodes pretty well for us. If it is a Sceptile deck, we are going to have to have an answer to that baby Sceptile, probably through our Tapu Lele GX. Not a great hand for sure. Looks like we are just going to probably be going for a Tapu Lele GX turn one. With as bad of a setup as this hand seems to be giving me, I wouldn't really be too comfortable using the Let Loose. Especially in a matchup like this that I assume we should win. Buzz Feramosa, this shouldn't be too bad for us at all. Go ahead and throw down the Lysander Labs, don't think that'll hurt us any. Trash of Fire Energy. And it doesn't look like we have any Lele GX available to us, so we are just going to go in with the Let Loose here. Let's see a heart from our opponent. We'll go ahead and give him one back. And we did draw something to draw us cards. I don't really love it, but we definitely do need to continue to get set up here, so... I'm just going to go ahead and attach one to this Lut Loose Mar Shadow here. And that'll be pretty good. I think I'll go ahead and save the Ultra Ball for next turn. Try to get down another Lut Loose Mar Shadow. And then go from there. Going to be a pretty slow start for us, but that shouldn't be too big of a deal. Is If we can just stream two knockouts on Buzzwell and Feromosas, then we should be in the clear. Interested to see if they're playing the Miss Magia, Miss Magius build. Sorry, that goes kind of turbo. Weakness policy. I don't love that. We do play a field blower, so we could get some use out of that in this matchup. Don't really see much from our opponent to counter what we're doing. We actually top deck a little at loose Mars Shadow, so that's going to be pretty good for us. Can just go ahead and get a Poiple now. And we will go ahead and let loose. 
do get the Guzma. No target there on our opponent's Pokemon. Throw down the Ultra Space so I can continue to get set up. Get another Poipole down. And I think I probably just have to start manually attaching to this Grimer so that I can present it as a threat to my opponents. Buzzwool and Feramosa GX. Not a big deal. Either way, it's going to get some Fire Energy cards in our discard pile, so I cannot complain. Kind of a dead hand from here. Don't love that. Still got all of our draw supporters left in our deck, though, so definitely could draw out of this. We just see a Beast Game GX. Okay. That isn't the biggest of deals. I'm going to go ahead and Ultra Space. Get another Blacephalon down. That way, if this one does end up going down next turn, I will have an answer to that. Attached to that one. And I will Bursting Burn. Confuse and burn him. He's not going to want to attack out of that Confusion, so maybe it can let our Blacephalon GX live for another turn. While inflicting a little bit of extra damage on him. But the life force comes down at a terrible time. Wow. That's going to be pretty bad for us here. And I'm not sure if we're going to be able to recover from what is happening right now. We're going to need a pretty huge top deck here. To be able to stay in this game. I think I'm just going to have to Ultra Ball away these two. I think I just have to Bursting Burn again, but that's not going to do anything to him. He is just going to respond with a Knockout. He's giving me a heart, so I'm sure that he has options here. See a jet punch, so I got one more turn to get out of this. I don't quite think that's going to get it done. I can mind blown, but it won't be for the knockout, so I'm just going to go ahead and concede this one. He got me there. I'm sure I made a couple misplays there. There was the time that I could have used that B string, but I just neglected to, thinking that he would stay poisoned. So, definitely a couple faults on my end for that. I'm not too experienced with the deck, so. We will go ahead and give it another one. A Fire and Dragon type. I assume that Dragon type is just going to be that Turdinator card. So it looks like we are going to be playing some sort of Fire deck, which in my experience testing this deck, I haven't actually gotten a chance to play against Rushizard yet. Beautiful hand here. <clears throat> but against the Baby Blacephalon deck, I have had quite a bit of success. I am going to assume it's Baby Blacephalon. As they were not playing any metal or normal types like the Eevee Snorlax or the Jirachi. But actually is going to be Reshizard. So not too bad. Got a pretty decent opening hand here. This is a pretty interesting hand. I do have three B-strings so I could just sit on it for quite a while. That might actually be the play here. Just kind of something that we are going to have to consider after our opponent's next turn whether we should actually use this Cynthia or not. And 
immediately we just see Eternal and Kiawe. So I definitely think we're going to hold this hand as we do play a ton of B strings and they are all in this hand at the moment. They are definitely going to be taking a knockout on their next turn. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and hold on to these. Touch one here. And just use a bursting burn here. Kind of throw our opponent through a loop a little bit. Make them have to make some tough decisions. That's one of the great things about Placephalon GX is in the early game, well, unless you draw a Welder, it's not going to be doing a ton of damage with the Mind Blown attack. You still have a ton of great options like the Bursting Burn attack and the Burst GX to kind of throw your opponent into some confusing spots sometimes so that, like in this situation, I'm sure they're trying to debate, should I attack through it, should I not, what is the correct play? If they hit the heads on it, then they are going to be doing the damage and it will ultimately be worth it, but... The tails could set them back even farther from where they want to be, and that 50 damage could be a pretty big deal considering it would get them down to that perfect, sorry, 30 damage would get them down to a 220 number, which is still going to be better for me. Um, the 30 damage actually wouldn't be a huge deal here, as it wouldn't affect my mind blown math any. So if it was me, I personally think I might just elect to attack through it, but if they do play a multitude of switch cards, and they do. They play a switch and a nice roller. So interesting to see what their strategy here is going to be. I imagine they're going to switch into this Reshizard. Expect me to burst thing burn again and then try to ace roll that one up. If they do do that, I believe I'm probably just going to use burst GX on that turn. Even though it might not play a huge factor in this matchup if they don't bench any non GXs. And you're really seeing here why Blacephalon GX can have such a great matchup against Reshizard, you know. It's a two-prizer as opposed to a three-prizer. They can just hit an unlimited amount of damage, so it is always going to have a decent matchup against these Tag Team GX decks, which is why it has stayed relevant in every format that it has been in so far. We see the switch, so I assume they are preparing for that Acer Roll of play. Like I said, I think I'm just going to use the Burst GX. It may not affect anything, but if they do end up taking the knockout on this Placephalon with a Welder and Double Blaze combo or a Flare Strike, I will still have a response to that through my B strings and then a Cynthia afterwards. So I am not too terribly concerned about what is happening here. Or even another option I have is to Guzma back up this Rush of the Ram and Charizard GX that does have the four energies on it and just reconfuse it. I'm sure that will cause some headaches for my opponent. So I think that is going to be my play here. Go ahead and beef up the Bliss F1 that I'll be sending to the bench. And just throw this Reshizard a bursting burn. Seems pretty good. Have a ton of B strings in my hand and I will be able to get them all off before I use the Cynthia and draw some more cards for the turn after. So I'm feeling pretty confident about this matchup here. Now is a big time for them though. If they do decide to attack through that confusion, it is going to put them at 200, which is only going to require me to discard four energies. So that could be a huge deal in this matchup and let me conserve my resources enough to knock out two of these rush Shizards pretty easily. And this is one of the things that I love about Blacephalon GX. Again, of course, it makes your opponent think a ton, and they're just going to have to go into a straight retreat, pretty much wasting that Kiawe that they had earlier in the game. So into an outrage attack that just isn't going to do enough damage. And with the Bursting Burn attack, I will still be able to put on plenty of pressure on this Rush Ram and Charizard. And as long as I can find 
my second or third Guzma, I should be able to take this game pretty handily. It's going to be a pretty big draw for me. I don't feel like it committing this energy to the active Blacephalon. I kind of just want it to get knocked out. So I'm just going to Lily again. Could shut down their basic abilities, but with the green search variant, I doubt they're playing it anyways. I'd rather just save this for another Nognatal. And just continue to Bursting Burn. That attack really causing a ton of problems for Reshizard right now. The issue is here, they could use the Ace Rolla now, but all it's going to get them is probably another Outrage for about 70. And then I'm just going to be able to Bursting Burn again, so... My opponent really doesn't have a ton of options here if they don't judge me and get all of these B strings out of my hand. And it looks like they may just be committing to attacking through the confusion, probably tired of it. And it is a tail as well, so that is going to get them down to 200 HP. Now I have to decide whether I want to commit my B-Strings now into my hand or if I want to use Cynthia to try to find another Fire Energy to really take this game by storm. I think now it's worth it to try to knock out this active Reshizard. And we do see a pretty good hand coming down here. I have four Energy, so I am going to be able to keep one on my active Reshizard still. And I am just going to use this Mind Blown Attack. I have a B string in hand, so I'm not too concerned of which energies I discard. But I, I am going to keep the one on the Bench Blacephalon. I do have the energy switch in hand in case this doesn't get knocked out. I can just move it up there and continue to Bursting Burn on them. So really strong play there. We do have another B string in hand, so we are pretty much prepared for whatever is going to happen. See another Guzma and the Heat Factory. That's going to be pretty big for us. All of those cards are pretty helpful. See an energy attachment. And we're just going to see an Outrage there. Actually shouldn't have played this treasure. I thought that I wanted to use the Let Loose Mars Shadow, but I do not. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab it anyways, in case I do decide after this Blacephalon is knocked out that I want to utilize that. But for now, I think I will just leave this bench space open. Play the Heat Factory down. And just Cynthia. I'm sure I will hit into the fire energy. I don't really want to burn that energy switch if I do not have to. This deck plays a ton of fire energy, so something I'm never really concerned about going into a draw supporter. And just continue to burn and confuse. Bursting burn really proving its worth in this matchup right now, as it's really giving my opponent a very hard time. Apricorn Maker. Not a card we usually see in Reshizard decks, but... I'm sure that it could be pretty useful in niche situations. See the Turtonator come down. As I suspected, that is going to be the Dragon type that they are playing. But with the Guzma in my hand and the B-Strings, even if they do take the knockout, whenever they do elect to take the knockout, I am going to be able to make a response on them there.
See our opponent taking quite a bit of time here. They are going to be able to utilize that heat factory. Something I definitely misplayed on last turn. I did not elect to discard this fire energy out of my hand. Something I should have done, but we do have the option this turn to do it. Or I believed we did. They do play down a power plant, which won't affect us too much, but it does get rid of our heat factory. 110 damage. So right now, my opponent is at 110 damage, which means I need to still discard. They have 160 HP left. I still need to discard four energies. So right now, I'm just going to start digging to hit that fourth energy. And I believe Let Loose is going to be the correct answer for that, as I can probably play a draw supporter thereafter. I haven't played a ton this game so far, but... Didn't get the draw supporter, but I did get the game in hand. So, send my opponent a... Well played. Go ahead and just grab another Naga Noodle. They're a little heartbroken, but that is just kind of how this matchup goes. Didn't even get to use all of those B strings that we were storing up for the longest time. Bursting Burn just providing so much value, they weren't ever able to attack out of it, so. Even if they were, I had the B-Strings on deck, ready to respond, so it's going to be a pretty good game, and really seeing how good Blacephalon GX can be, as it kind of dominates that Reshizard deck that you probably will see two to three times in a regional tournament. We'll go ahead and run one more here. Sorry about that, guys. Getting up that ladder on the grind. Try to get that Professor Sycamore there. That'll add to, I believe we already have two or three of them, so that'll give us close to a full play set, which will be nice for when expanded regionals are coming up. And we're going to be providing you guys with some deck lists for those as well. Fire Lightning Psychic. I believe this is going to be another Reshizard deck. The Lightning type is bound to be a Dedenna GX as well as the psychic type probably being a Lele or a Mew, so. See if this deck can still stack up, and I am liking this opening hand so far. We got the Welder for when we draw into our Fire Energies, B-String, Energy Switch, Mysterious Treasure. We have our Blacephalon GX, which I usually like to start in most matchups. There's some matchups that Naganadal can kind of just handle on its own, but the Blacephalon GX is going to be the best starter in most of these GX matchups. See a Jirachi. That is telling me that we are going to be playing a more traditional and popular Reshizard deck that is playing the Jirachis right now. I've been personally liking the Greens quite a bit. I've seen a ton of success with it, and I'm really liking the Volcanion card right now. see an acro bike you're getting rid of the viridian it's unfortunate i would like to see that viridian in play and something that i might even add to this deck is the viridian over the lysander labs the lysander labs can be good in some random situations but i'm not sure if you're going to draw into it when you need it enough for it to really matter enough in games over the viridian which can help you get your fire energies into this discard pile turn after turn The advantage of this Jirachi variant is it is going to have a little bit better of a Blacephalon GX matchup, as Jirachi doesn't really care about being burned and confused too much, so the Reshi Zards on its own is really what we're targeting to attack here. And we do see a Kiawe. We get the Heat Factory early, that's pretty nice. I think I'm going to go ahead and use it. And not really a great hand here. It's giving me the option to field blower, but I don't see any field blower targets. It may just let me use the field blower regardless of the heat factory not being able to be discarded by it. Go ahead and get rid of this welder. Got all our poiples this time. Just going to go ahead and grab another one here. And Lily for three. 
not a horrible hand. Definitely going to be able to play off of it next time. Instead of Bursting Burn, I think I'm just going to go ahead and use the Burst GX here. I don't really care about confusing and burning this Jirachi as it will probably be getting out of that active spot later in the game. And Guzma would have been nice this turn. That's kind of what I was digging for with the Heat Factory. Trying to Bursting Burn that Rush Ram and Charizard there would be really helpful for us. see the stellar wish they do find the escape board our blacephalon gx is going to be going down this turn we have the b string we have the welder so we do have a little bit of a response to it not quite the draw supporter that i want to be using on this turn but we will see if we can make it work maybe find an ultra ball or a mysterious treasure to help us get into a let loose to continue to draw more b strings Our opponent actually plays a let loose of their own. So this isn't the worst hand ever. I'm debating whether I want to use the Ultra Ball for a let loose or if I want to use the Heat Factory first to kind of try to draw into some B strings. The Fire Energies aren't guaranteed to be in my hand after the let loose, so not sure what the correct path to go down here is. But our opponent is exploding with a Dedenne GX, a Let Loose, draw supporters on top of that, I'm sure. So, Really, the Reshizard deck is so powerful that even in its bad matchups, for example, such as Water decks or Blacephalon GX, it can just explode with that turn one Kiawe and really have a good time anyways, regardless of what it's playing against. Seeing this ball come down. I'm sure it's going to be getting another Reshizard or maybe another Tech Attacker. A second Jirachi in case we do deny that with our Alolan Muck line. Or just take the knockout on the current Jirachi. We see kind of a risky play. I'm not sure why they really went into the second Jirachi unless they would have the switch card in their hand, but not too bad from our opponent. We have the Lysander Labs in play, but we are going to want to be able to take advantage of that Heat Factory, so I think I'm going to keep one in deck just to up our probability of hitting an energy off that Heat Factory, and we're just going to go ahead and let loose here. We have a usable hand. Hopefully we can get into a draw supporter off of this heat factory. We do get the Blacephalon, which is huge for us. And just go ahead and use this heat factory. Before we make any decisions on attachments here. I think this game here is going to be pretty tough for us. So we are just going to have to go pretty risky here not really getting a ton of options here off of the heat factory and let loose so we are just going to go into a bursting burn here go ahead and bench the ditto prism star we don't have another blacephalon gx ready so if this one gets knocked out we are probably just about out of the game see what they elect to do here they're going to need to hit they actually don't need to hit anything to take the knockout on this Turdinator here, but definitely some scary times for us.
probably taking quite a bit of time as they usually do when they have a confused active Pokemon. They have to make some tough decisions whether they want to use the manual retreat. Heat Factory is a good early option. Pretty safe. You know you're going to want to do that. So The Escape Rope is pretty good for us. We will get to keep the energies on our Blacephalon while just sacrificing our Let Loose. They do find a Guzma here. I think we were probably just about out of the game. see a fire crystal it's not quite a guzma so they may have it in their hand but looks like they are going to keep digging as they know how important it is to hit this guzma to secure this game and a welder so neither of those were guzmas fortunate enough for us so we do have a chance to stay in this game here but they do have the guzma in hand anyways we'll go ahead and see through our top deck but without b string i don't think that we're going to have many options here. Go ahead and promote the Poivle. And we do get the beast string. So we're going to go ahead and scoop this one up, guys. We've played five games here. We won a few of them. You can really see how Blacephal and GX can dominate games. If it does draw well, it's not the most consistent of decks. You will get some kind of bulky hands. You can improve the list a little bit to kind of make its consistency better, but it will make its matchups such as Zapdos better if you decide to remove that Alolan Muck line. Um, this has been a good video for you guys. I hope that you have enjoyed it. Go ahead and like our Facebook page, Team No Leak, as well as subscribing to our YouTube page. And that is going to be about it for me. You guys have a great day, and thank you so much.